to my channel. Today I'm back with another Trash to Treasure video. I'll be sharing and making over three different items that I picked up from my local thrift store. I did purchase all of these items a few months back and I was finally able to get them all redone. I really enjoy making over secondhand and thrifted items and I hope that you guys enjoy watching these types of videos. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up and share it. If you're not subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe. If you guys want to see all three items all made over, then please keep watching. The first item I'm showing you today is this wooden bottle caddy. I picked this up at Goodwill for $3.99 and it is such a good solid piece and I knew it would be perfect to flip. I started by painting the caddy with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did paint the entire piece in this color. And I had to make sure to paint in a couple different directions so that I was able to get all of the paint inside of all of the wooden grooves. This piece was made with really rough pieces of wood, which I like because it makes it look really rustic. I also really love that this caddy came with a bottle opener already attached to the side. I originally was not going to take it off when painting it, I was just going to paint around it, but then I decided it was probably best for me to take it off, paint underneath where the opener is going to sit, and then place it back on once I was done painting. Once that plaster color was all dry, I then wanted to distress this piece. So to do that, I used my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle and my Dollar Tree stencil brush and I dry brushed that right over top of the entire piece. And then once I was done painting, I reattached the bottle opener that was on the side of the caddy. Next, I'm applying this windmill stencil that I picked up from Michaels and I'm pressing it down right in the center underneath that bottle opener. And then for the paint color, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush once again to paint that color over top of the windmill. Once the paint dried, I then peeled the stencil off from the side and I am going to be reusing this stencil for the other side of the caddy as well so that both sides match. And I did it the same way, I just reapplied the stencil in the center just like I did the first time, painted that ink color over top and then once the paint was all dry, I then re-peeled off the stencil. Next, I'm applying this Farm Fresh stencil on the front side of my caddy in the center on the top piece of wood. I also got this stencil from Michaels. All of the stencils that I'm using today on this project are all from the same pack of stencils, which is really nice. And the color that I'm painting over top of the Farm Fresh is the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink once again. And I'm also using the Dollar Tree stencil brush. Once the paint dried, I then just peeled the stencil right off. Originally, I was going to leave my caddy without these little houses painted underneath, but when I saw this stencil and it was the perfect size, I knew I had to use it. So I placed it right in the center of the bottom piece of wood on the front of the caddy underneath where I painted the Farm Fresh. And I did the same thing as I did the other stencils. I just applied them and then with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, I painted that over top. And then once the paint was all dry, I peeled the stencil off. Here is my caddy all made over. I think it turned out so good and I just love how it goes with the rest of my farmhouse decor that I have in my house. This did have the inserts to fit six different bottles, but the bottles I'm using are a little bit bigger, so I was only able to fit three of them. Now moving into the next thrifted item in today's video, it is this recipe card holder that is shaped like a rolling pin. I also got this piece from Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. When I saw it, it just screamed farmhouse to me and I knew I had to get it. For this piece, I started by painting the middle portion of my rolling pin with my plastered colored chalk paint. And I did have to do two coats to get everything covered up nicely. And for around the sides by the handles, I did use a smaller paintbrush so that I could get in all the little areas really well. And I wasn't really worried about getting the paint on the handles because I knew I would be covering it up with a darker colored paint. After the plaster color was all dry, I then started painting both of my handles. I used the folk art chalk paint in the color Castle for these. And I did use a smaller brush when painting this color on so that I didn't have any mess ups and get any of this castle color onto my plaster color. 
Next, I'm applying this blessed stencil that I picked up from Michaels. I'm placing it on the front of my rolling pin on the lower right hand side and I'm just pressing that stencil right on the rolling pin until it's placed exactly where I want it to be. For the paint, I'm using my Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink and my Dollar Tree stencil brush. No surprise there. <laughs> and then I'm just dabbing this paint right over the letters, but I'm not using a ton of paint because I want it to look kind of worn where my words are. Once my paint is all dry, I'm then peeling off the stencil. For my handles, I wanted them to have a little bit more color to them, so I had some of that leftover plastered color paint on my brush, and I just very lightly painted that on both of the handles. And for the center of the rolling pin, I took some of that castle color paint that was left over on my brush and very lightly painted that over the entire center portion of my rolling pin. For the very last step, I added some of this buffalo check ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I just placed it around one of the handles and tied a really simple bow. And here is my rolling pin recipe card holder all finished. I'm so happy with how this one turned out. It took me hardly any time at all to make this one over and it looks perfect in my farmhouse kitchen. Now moving into the last and final flip item for today. It is this really simple wooden cutting board. I picked this up also at Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. I knew when I saw it that it was gonna be a perfect project piece. For this project, again, I started by painting it with my plastered colored chalk paint and I did have to do two coats of paint and I painted both sides of the cutting board. After I was done painting the first coat though, I realized that some of the cutting marks on the board were coming through. So I took some sandpaper, I believe this was 120 grit, and I just sanded over all of the marks that you could see like where there was cuts in the board and then I just painted the second coat over top of that. Next, I'm gonna be creating the stripes down the center of my board. I'm using this measuring tape to mark off exactly where the center was, and then I'm taking a piece of painter's tape and placing it a little bit to the left of where that mark was, and then another piece of painter's tape and just pushing it over a little bit to the right of where that center piece was. And then I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color steel and painting that in between the two pieces of painter's tape. After the paint has dried, I'm peeling both pieces of painter's tape off. Now I'm gonna be making a smaller stripe to the right of the one that I just created. This one, I'm gonna be making the line a little bit smaller. So I'm placing the two pieces of painter's tape next to each other, but like I said, the space in between is gonna be smaller. I just measured to make sure that it was consistent all the way down. And then I used that same color steel to paint in between both pieces of these painter's tape. And then once that paint has dried, I'm just pulling off the painter's tape. Now I'm creating another thin stripe on the other side of my center stripe and I'm doing the exact same thing I did on the other side, placing two pieces of painter's tape with a thin space in between and then measuring to make sure that the space in between is consistent all the way down and then painting in between the pieces of painter's tape with my steel colored chalk paint. And once again, when my paint is all dry, I'm then peeling off all of my pieces of tape. For the back side of my cutting board, I did the same lines. I just matched up all of the pieces of painter's tape with the lines I did on the front side so that I could have the same exact consistent lines on both sides of my cutting board. Now that I have my lines painted, I'm then placing the stencil that I got from Hobby Lobby right in the center of my cutting board over top of the stripes I created. I'm then placing some painter's tape on both sides of the stencil to hold it into place so that it doesn't move around when I'm painting. And then because I'm not going to be using any of the words that are on the stencil, I also covered those up with some painter's tape so that I wouldn't accidentally get paint on them and then have the words show through on my cutting board. I only wanted to have the cow, the pig, and the rooster. 
The paint color I'm using, again, is the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink. I love this color chalk paint, and this brand chalk paint is one of the best, in my opinion. I'm also using my Dollar Tree stencil brush, and I am building up this paint color. I think I did two coats on this one. I wanted to have all of the animals look really dark. Once I had them all painted, I peeled off all of the pieces of painter's tape and removed my stencil. I'm now distressing my entire cutting board using a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm pretty much just sanding in all of the areas that I think would look good distressed. And as far as all of the animals that are painted in that ink color, I did not sand over top of those. All of the paint dust that's coming up from that plaster color is actually going like over top of the black part of the animals and it's making them look really distressed, which I loved. And for the last step, I'm tying a piece of this white and black buffalo check ribbon from Hobby Lobby around the top of my cutting board and tying a really simple bow. Here is the cutting board all made over. This one was such an easy flip and I'm so excited to display this piece in my kitchen. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. It really helps out my channel. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing and please be sure to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And as always, please leave me a comment down below which project from today's video was your favorite. Thank you so much for watching.